disease. Right, pirate disease, why is it a problem? It's been an inherent problem in museums for the last 150 years. Um, it's something that most people didn't understand how it all works. That basically what, what we find is in some of the um, provincial museums, they put something in the drawer and then 20 years later, they open the drawer up and then it's covered in white sort of dust. The thing's cracked and crazed and completely destroyed. The label's been stained by all this oxidised pyrite. And it's been the bane of every curator's life. And time's gone by not that long ago. They thought it was actually activated by bacteria. So what they did, they used a, an emollient called Savlon, which is like a cream for to kill the sort of bacteria and it covered everything in Savlon. Well, unfortunately that didn't work. And then the other th thing that came up was to actually cover it in paraloid or some varnish to stop the oxygen getting in. Um, and that certainly doesn't work either because it's over, it's really porous that, you know, even the varnish or paraloid or whatever it will be. And really what we've come to the conclusion, and I think I've proved it in my collection, which is only 40 years old, is the fact that Humidity is, I think, the factor that causes initial degradation. And the recommended, I think, years ago was about 55, 60% relative humidity. And I've tried to keep ours to about 40%, which I'll be honest with you, um, and you know, I've not really had any problems at all. What we do get sometimes, which uh, I can't explain, but it does happen, where you get something like a a bone or a nodule or something that actually shrinks and cracks and how that gets instigated i don't know because sometimes it can be in a collection for oh many many years and then it starts to sort of shrink and crack you break the crack open there's no sort of um oxidization or anything like that i don't know how it gets instilled but sometimes it sort of cracks up to a certain point and then stabilizes so really i don't honestly know in the collection here, we, we try using a thing called Artsorb to control the humidity in the cases. Unfortunately, when they built the sort of cases, they weren't airtight. We've proven that beyond doubt, that when we get a really wet day, we notice the humidity starts to go up a little bit. It doesn't, it's not uncontrollable, but it certainly fluctuates, which we don't want. And so... In the future, when if and when we get a, the grant to do that, what we would do is redesign the cabinets to make them more accessible, actually, to, to students and researchers. And, and also, we'll pressurise, we'll over-pressurise the, the cabinets. In other words, we'll over-pressurise it with dry um, air, 40% RH, and any leakage will be inside sort of out rather than outside in. So hopefully that will then secure it for the future and I think most museums are trying to achieve that and unfortunately some of these major museums with vast sort of um, collections it's a pretty arduous job and quite expensive to achieve that and of course if you've got collections on show with the public you've really got to encase these things um, and make sure that you know that the humidity from the public sort of coming in doesn't fluctuate and destroy that the other thing is i think the natural history museum we're working with a thing uh it's like a it's exactly the same as what chris have put into this foil packaging and they worked out that actually they can do this i forget the name of it you can do the same they put an oxygen scavenger in with it so in other words they seal this thing and the oxygen scavenger takes all the oxygen out of it and it's really just inert um, that's great, but who wants to open up a crisp packet to see the fossil? Because it's really difficult to sort of access the fossils. It's good for some, it's quite expensive as well. Um, but hey, a lot of their material is historical. Probably no one's ever going to look at it in the next hundred years anyhow. So I guess that's the, probably the way forward for them. But it, for most museums, it's a little bit out of the sort of uh, their price range to actually achieve that. Collections in general, anything that contains pyrite, which is a metalliferous mineral, uh, when you break it down, they used to collect it and actually uh, refine it, and out of that comes sulfuric acid. So sulfuric acid is, is present in pyrite. And most of our material, if not all of it, no, most of it, I would say, is infiltrated by pyrite. So when we slice the bone open, all those voids which are infilled normally with a 
another sort of mineral like calcite or something like that is infilled with pyrite and it it's really looks really really nice but it's it, as i say it's an unstable mineral so our ammonites are completely pyrotized um, and i've noticed the ones that collected in the 60s in the natural history museum are really degrading now because of that uncontrolled humidity factor and once they go it's really a problem and you can use a thing called enthenolamine thioglycolate is like a liquid you put it into that actually destroys the sort of the effect of the the, the ongoing effect of degradation but it, it really leaves a different sort of color it's not the be all and end all uh, they used to put it into other sort of um is it chlorine or something like that no ammonia i think it was and then try and treat it with that but it's it's still not effective because i've seen st stuff in the natural history museum it's been treated and it's still degrading so it's one of those things that if you've got something like ammonites that it was john cope who collected them in the 60s the best thing is to go out in the field and replicate what they are and and just get rid of those and because there's so many of them you can just replace them all the time so every 20 years you can replace them with like for like new ones that you collect in the field that's probably the best way but we seem to hang on to the thing it's historical we've got to keep it regardless but that's not what i would do here pyrite disease well it's, yeah it's, it's an interesting thing but it is the bane of everyone's lives and this is where i've had a, a fish that was in pyrite and it started to crack and go and i've cut the pyrite right down and it's fine now it's just the large amount that's why it happens in a large amount and a small i don't know but no one can answer those things but if someone finds the answer they like, we make a lot of money from it the museums so how to do it how to achieve it how to stop it prevent it but the only way as i say is humidity from from my perspective that's all we've got for you today from the Etches Collection. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more and hopefully we'll see you next time.